without further ado, it is my absolute <laughs> honor to welcome Jane Esselstein to the Norwich Bookstore once again in addition to being one of the country's leading experts on plant-based nutrition she's of course also uh a, a can we can we say a, an upper valley resident emeritus uh totally yeah a, a friend and for sometime neighbor to many of you we are so delighted to welcome here her here to speak about her book be a plant-based woman warrior <laughs> from wherever you're joining us tonight please join me in giving a warm upper valley welcome to jane Esther. Um, well, that was wonderful, Sam. Thank you. And I do have a few thank yous. So thank you, Norwich Bookstore. And I do hope you guys, I know you guys are all big supporters of this place. I certainly was back in the uh, pre-2000s. Um, but I also want to thank a couple people specifically. And first of all, I want to thank Elizabeth Keene, who gave me the courage to make crackers. <laughs> How many of you guys make your own crackers? Probably, you guys are wholesome. You probably spin your own wool in the afternoon, too. Um, but they have good crackers here. So thank you, Elizabeth, for the courage to make my own crackers. And these, these are actually with chickpea flour, not with the millet flour as advertised in the recipe on page 203. Thank you for the sign. Maggie Kuntz. Um, and another person I want to thank who's not here is Penny Rand. She really taught me the power of digital storytelling, picture storytelling. And I feel like this cookbook is... I know for me personally, it is a, it's a story told about like my mom and me and our, what we truly eat as women, plant-based women warriors. <laughs> um, and, ooh, and I also want to, big thank you to Cindy Pierce, who some of you guys might know. This weekend was a personal weekend because I came to see her amazing show that she put on the last four days and some of you guys were there. Um, but it also gave me a reason to call Sam and be like, hey, hey. This book just came out and it actually, um, I'm so amazed to say that it made the bestseller list on the New York Times. And, and, yeah. and, 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 oh, 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 okay, we'll get you there. When, when do you want to come? And this day worked out perfectly. So I was happy to have that. But I also sent out a flare a couple of years ago, two, about a year and a half ago, to Cindy, Cindy and I said, we've got all these amazing recipe testers, but uh, some of them haven't responded as much as I'd like. And COVID's so weird. Like, would you? She's like, ah. I could take on Mava if you need a couple tested. Uh -huh. So I sent her the list for all the recipe testers, and it sounds like this amazing. Oh, I'll taste recipes. Sign me up. No, you got to go to the store, get a shopping <laughs> list. You got to get stuff you've never heard of, maybe, or that you don't like that much. Cindy ended up being, she tied for being the best recipe tester with one other woman from Connecticut. None of my Cleveland pals were very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you to that, Cindy. And I also want to thank another recipe contributor who made the trek here from three houses down. <laughs> she made it here and she said that she's willing to sign page 107 tonight for her guacamole recipe, Miss Kristen Brown. <laughs> so those are my thank yous and to my local Lassie pals who really helped me keep coming back here. Um, so I want to just get to it because some of you guys did drive. Someone said they drove 30 minutes to be here tonight. Thank you. I drove nine hours. Um, but um, this book, people, the question that we're often asked, and I say we, I'm so used to having my mom right here next to me. She gets shorter by the minute, but she's right here next to me and she's bigger than life. So it, I feel her and we actually talked earlier today and she's like, I miss you. I really want to be there. I'm like, I'm calling you now because I miss you too and I want you to be there. I think because her best friend's right here, Lily. They were roommates in college and actually there were three of them and she had, my mom had a baby girl, me, September 16th and Lily had a baby girl, September 16th. We are twins. <laughs> um, so uh, anyway, my mom is, she's so here tonight and um, what we were often asked kind of made us a little bit pissed, sorry, bad. But we're like, so this book for a plant based woman where is like, well, why women? And I'm like, how many books have we read about men and not asked why it was genderified? Like, whoa, really? Okay, we'll answer this. Here we go. First reason is this is a tip of the hat to my mom. My mom was given this uh, 
message of to, to be a plant-based eater in the early 80s when it wasn't even plant-based it was like my, my father came home and said hey I'm working with my patients who have breast cancer. He's a general surgeon. He's not a cardiologist. He's so misrepresented as being a cardiologist. General surgeon. And he wanted to work with his cancer patients, help them to not just be like a carpenter doing surgery on them, but to help them prevent and reverse these diseases. He was going with this theory of no meat, no dairy, no added oil, minimal salt, minimal sweets, all this stuff. And my mom was like, um, oh, okay, here we go. Um, there's no internet. There's no Whole Foods type places. There's no co-op. Cleveland, Ohio. We have like garlic, salt, and bacon. I mean, <laughs> it, is, it is amazing that she made it somehow have wheels and move and go and become this thing. So I really think this book, for me, was a tip of the hat to her because she is my next door neighbor, not across the street, next door neighbor. And we do so much together. She's my daily dose of hell yeah, because she's out there, she's raked the whole garden and she's strapped on a tire that my husband made that drags behind you and she's like getting this high friction workout on the, on the hills <laughs> of our little neighborhood because she wants to keep going and she has so much energy. She's sharp as a tack. There's 20 of us in our family with like, you know, so many birthdays and this is and that's and friends and girlfriends and boyfriends and dead identities and whatever. She's at, up on all of it. And my dad could tell you the score of any football game, but probably no one's birthday. <laughs> and so we love this, this. I just, there's so much that I love and appreciate about her. And so, like I said, she's my daily dose of hell yeah. I want to be like her for as long as I can be. This Energizer Bunny, this pistol, this full capacity head and body and spirit, who she is because she is fierce about her plant-based diet. And I swear she's made of like 87 year old stem cells. I don't know how that's even legal, but she is. And every morning she has her breakfast. It's called Anne's Warrior Breakfast. Um, I don't know the page number. Should have done that one. Uh, but she it sticks to it. And I swear that's, that's something that I, if you're going to try it, maybe have it for dinner the first time you have it. It's an odd breakfast. We called it a witch's brew for so many years. And now we all ourselves are kind of addicts of for her strange breakfast. Um, another reason that we this is for women is that the majority of people who do the mental labor around the non-optional task of free feeding humans are women, the majority. There are plenty of amazing, beautiful men out there doing the same thing, but it's mostly women. We think, we create, we grow, we shop, we harvest, we pluck, we prep, we chop, we mise en place, we do whatever we do to our food, <laughs> and then prepare it, cook it, and maybe serve it or people serve themselves. But the majority of that has come from us, and from women. Wash the dishes. No, someone else has got to wash the dishes. <laughs> come on. <laughs> yeah. um, shops and cooks. <laughs> yes. And so I really want women to be fierce because in all, doing all that cooking, chopping, prepping, we have unwittingly and unknowingly and out of, in the name of love, sometimes created these lifestyle related diseases that we have on a whole food plant-based diet for decades now seen are reversible. Things that it's so sad to see this, the heart disease, the type two diabetes, the just, it gets insidious. You can get into like people, we don't give a hoot about weight because weight is what it is and it's gonna be here, there, everywhere, but the things that you can control your diet are, they seem to be innumerable when we, when we get all these emails daily about people's messages. But anyway, so I want women to be, just be bold. Get more plants in there. Get more plants in there. Yeah, of course I'd be like, yeah, be whole food plant-based all the way. But if, if you can just do more, take it, take it. I don't, I'll take it. I don't, I'm not concerned with what you're eating, but I do hope it's more plants and your whole community, your whole family, your whole body will benefit from it, will love it. Um, okay, so we have fierce, like my mom. We have bold women. Just be bold in what you prepare. And the last thing I wanna talk about is being just to eat delicious. And I have three brothers. I'm surrounded by brothers. Mm -hmm. We were talking today, a bunch of us grew up with only brothers. And we're like, yeah, you ran on shirtless? Oh yeah, forever. You peed like this? Psst, yeah, forever. Like, we were like, 
it was before, you know, a lot of stuff has come around with identity, but we totally were like just one of the pack. And it was awesome. Um, and I felt awesome and invincible. And it was, it was so long ago. I'm a 57 Chevy now. I'm so old now. But I, back in my teens, I was in Olympic trials at age 14. I was like, unstoppable. Like, I can do anything. But around age 18, 19, I was in college and I started getting like curvy and feeling, I'm like, whoa, whoa, I don't identify with what's going on. But I have morning practice and afternoon practice. And we got NCAAs coming up. I'm the only one who qualified. Oh my God, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. Gotta, gotta, what's going on? I'm, I, what, who am I? What the heck? My brothers, also swimmers, also swimming, you know, weirdly, all swam really well for our universities. Uh, it feels so long ago. Sorry if it sounds like I'm bragging. I feel like I'm talking about another person. Um, they didn't think for one minute about what they were putting in their mouth and the, the food and were they going to eat enough to have that energy or what was happening to their body. They just looked stronger and faster every year. And it wasn't happening with me. But oddly, at that exact time, my parents went on a whole food plant-based diet or just they went on a plant-based or whatever. But it wasn't plant-based yet. It was just like, we're vegetarian, but we're not going to eat this or that or rah, rah. So I was like, okay. And it sort of worked for me. And over a couple of years, things started to, I, I lost that sense of food head where my identity, self-worth, sense of shame, I don't even know what it was, but it was sniffing into a terrifying place. And luckily it, it turned around and I had the most boring wardrobe forever because I'm fortunate that it's been the same wardrobe since like college mm -hmm. and it's such a liberating feeling. I was recently at a retreat. My brother Rip, maybe you've heard, some of you have heard of Rip, as, um, his company's called Plant Strong and we have a retreat and by the end of a retreat everyone's feeling so good and liberated their bowels are empty, their <laughs> minds are clear, their eyes are sparkling and we have a, a big <laughs> evening around this fire pit and Rip's like, let's tell ghost stories. <laughs> and everyone's like, can we start with like jokes or something? Like, they're not going to get terrified. It was a really nice night. So people are telling stories and jokes. And this one woman gets up and she, and everyone who's at this retreat has there for some, usually some reason around food in their life and something that's been hard. But um, this woman got up and she's telling a great story about how she grew up. She's Canadian, but she grew up on the Gaza Strip, hiking all over the desert. and getting lost one day, but coming literally upon an oasis and getting a ride with these Bedouins back to her village. I mean, it was amazing. And then she said, and everyone laughed and clapped. It was a beautiful story. And then she said, okay, now I have a horror story. And we're all like, oh, she's a good storyteller. What's this horror story going to be? And she said, I came to college and, you know, after living all over the world and I was sitting around with all my great new girlfriends at college. It was so fun having all these fr friends, like stateside and stuff. She said, we were all having tea or cookies or whatever. And someone said, oh my God, oh my God, let's go around the room. How much do you weigh? How much do you weigh? And everyone was sharing. She's like, I, I weigh, I think 140. And they're like, oh, you don't look like you weigh that much. And she said, that is when the horror story began. Mm -hmm. The shame, the size, the shape, the scale, the who. She's like, it's been a lifelong since that moment. And I was like, that was masterful. That was masterful, frightening, resonating with so many women. But that is why I want you to be delicious. And there's so many delicious things you could eat on a whole food plant based diet. I know this is a weird thing to call cake, for example. But I didn't want to bake a cake and have it not make it here from Cleveland. So I made it really thin in a pan and it's like a crispy brittle. So please try it. All right, I'm going to move out of, okay, we talked about why to be, be a plant-based woman warrior. Live fierce, stay bold, eat delicious for all those reasons. But you guys, can you guys for a minute, like why plant-based? Do any of you guys have a reason? Of, what, what's... Hi, hi, Annie. Hi, Annie. Uh, why plant-based? Well, this is my husband, Chris. We're uh, plant-based. Or you guys have a seat? Oh, it's okay. Thank you. I've been sitting all day. Um, I've lost almost 170 pounds, and Chris has lost 80 pounds and gotten off of heart medicine and cholesterol medicine. So thank you for sharing that. That's so you guys are doing it. Yeah. 
you know you're doing it. And, and we want to just keep, we're in our 50s now, we want to just make, expect every year to be healthier and feel better instead of our friends who expect to feel worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh my gosh, thank you for sharing that. And so, they're not plants. I don't know them. I really have never. <laughs> we're, we're about ninety percent plants. <laughs> oh, anybody else? Like, why? Why would a plant-based diet? What's what? What's the other good thing about it? Anybody or bad thing or anything? Any, any comments about it? My husband's a school teacher. He used to teach at Marion Cross. Maybe you've heard of it. Um, it's right there. And he said, you need to crowdsource for a minute because people are going to say great things about plant-based diet. Like, anybody heard how it affects the? Environment. Environment? Oh my God, Sloan, exactly. <laughs> wonderful effect on the environment. Anybody here love animals? Oh yeah, it's wonderful ethically. And anybody want to worry about their pocketbook a little bit? It's amazing how reasonable it is. You don't have to buy, you know, pre-made rolled sushi, like $10 per slice. No, you just bag of beans, bag of rice, you're good to go. It's really, it's amazing how it ticks so many boxes of big concerns, just climate, and ethics and we as a family came through it for nutritional reasons and health benefits and they've seemed to come far and wide in heart disease well I'm jumping ahead a little bit but uh, uh, throughout this book I don't know if you've if had people have looked at it um, the cookbook yeah yay uh, but the beginning part we have the stories of like we were, there's so many people like you guys who we've met heard about emails messages all the time and they're all so beautiful to hear and we love that you share them but we wanted to choose people for the cookbook who we knew, who we saw go through this, what you, like you just said, go through this like, oh, yes, I'm embracing this and I feel so much better. So in the cookbook, we have a story about a woman, well, with heart, who heart disease was something that she was struggling with forever, as well as type two diabetes and some other things. A woman who was on 42 meds, six since she was born. She was somehow born with scarlet fever. I've never heard of that, I don't know how it's possible, but she was sick her whole life long. 42 medications, da, da, da. she's now 50, and she, goes, and she had lupus forever. Like her jaw is made of her hip, and her this is made of that. She's just uh, it's so complicated, but she's like, I'm on no meds now. I lift weights. I never knew I had a muscle in my body. I flex everywhere I go. I'm like, I'll have two coffees. I'll have two of those. And I'm going to carry my own groceries. She's like so proud. She was in Women's Day. There was Women's World, there's Women's Day. Which one's a little bit sketchier? Which one? like one's like more of like the day. day. Yeah, it's more tabloidy. She's in Women's Day. But it's the truth. Like, they asked me, like, which woman in your book do you want to be in Women's Day? And I'm like, Joyce, Lupus, Joyce from Lupus, Joyce with Lupus story. It's unbelievable. And we knew her through that whole transition. So to see it with your own eyes and see her feel this healthy with her own body is beautiful. And um, woman with, a woman with rheumatoid arthritis who's a cardiologist, her story's in there, Monica, which is so awesome to read. Another woman, Sarai, with MS, getting that turned around. I mean, these, it seems like, are you guys selling snake oil? But I'm, I'm so glad you're here to share. It's not, it's, you're doing the work. And it's, it's so easy. It's almost embarrassing because Mother Nature. It's not that hard once no. we got the hang of it. Yeah, it, Mother Nature kind of nailed it out of the gate. Like, everything's got everything you need. And you get to eat more. Eat a ton, <laughs> and you're filled with fiber, and fiber is supple, and your mother, everything's just supple. It's lovely. And I love seeing, like my mom especially, how supple she seems to me in mind and body. It's beautiful. Um, so, And another woman, the last one I want to share is a woman named Jordy who shared her story. She had just gotten married. She was 24, and she was having trouble with iron deficiency. And she was anemic. She was actually losing a lot of blood from her fibroids in her uterus and fibroids are kind of like stalactites in your uterus that grow like drip like the stalactites but they're dripping blood so she was dripping all this blood and the doctor was like well um your anemia is getting kind of serious we may have to just give you a hysterectomy she just got married for goodness sake and fortunately unfortunately her dad had a horrible heart attack died three times on the table but woke up and his wife was like, we're getting this prevent and reverse heart disease coach by Dr. Eaglestein. Blah, 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 forks over knives. And then they became like you guys. And they turned this around. And their daughter, who was so dismayed about her whole thing, she was eating with them a lot because she was so sad. 
she ended up getting pregnant. So she didn't need a, she didn't have a hysterectomy. She had a baby. <laughs> and I just felt like saying, <laughs> to the, what, you know, to the life she had to live. But I wanted them to name their baby Fib for fibroid. But also for the fib that she was told that she needed a hysterectomy. I mean, just to, just, just to allow the, I mean, maybe some people wanted to, would go with the hysterectomy. But the options are out there. And one of the options can be this discussion of a path like you guys are on. It's, a, it's, it's more work for you, but it's, you're the locus of control of your own health, which feels so liberating. And so it's, I mean, you get captivated with yourself. Like, look what I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, it's so easy to give advice to everybody, but to like do it is a whole different ball of wax. Um, okay. Let me see where I am in my notes. Um, I think I've gotten through all my being fierce, bold, and uh, delicious. Um, my husband, again, the school teacher, framing this for me, he said, you know, be sure to say a little bit about what it was like to write the book. And writing the book, like I've mentioned, with my mom, my next door neighbor, was great. It was just a riot. I mean, we have a pine needle path from door to door. We got the contract the, to make this, this book project on, you guys will all understand this, March 7th, 2020. Mm -hmm. And a week later, mm -hmm. so we felt so lucky that we had something to do for however long this might be. And then here, you know, over half of you have passed on still. It's, it, um, it was kind of terrifying in a way. Like I didn't know I could go to the grocery store in Pepper Pie. I mean, you know, anywhere, it was like the co-op, but I would shop for my parents next door and I'd come home like a mule <laughs> with all these groceries and all of our kids home and some of their friends from college and just, it was ridiculous. So there was no recipe testing for a couple months because we didn't know, the world was sideways. Then we started getting our hack together and recipe testing and getting stuff going on. So we knew we were on the right track after about a year when we said, okay, let's assess where we are. What do we have? What do we have? What do we have? Like, okay, we got about Looks like we got about seven breakfasts, about eight good lunches, about nine good dinners. And in this book, for Plant-Based Women Warriors, we had 44 desserts. <laughs> <laughs> we were right on target. Yeah. We knew we were in the, going in the right direction. So anyway, um, it, it, was, it was a ton of fun. The recipe testers coming into it and testing things, it was great because some things got caught in the filter and didn't make it into the book. And some of the things you get affirmed because you make them, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight times. And then having, you know, Cindy was like, Jane, your English is so weird and how you're describing it. Do you mean quarter tablespoon, tablespoons? Get the edit, just like editing, editing, editing. Like you need people who are going to be fierce about editing your stuff. And just this was too chalky. This was mm, didn't work for me. And like you just have to listen to that. And it's kind of hard. But I have to say, it's the best part of my life where I've been open to feedback. <laughs> and I've been, it's so wonderful to get feedback on stuff. So anyway, hopefully the book has worked out well with the recipes and it, it was wonderful to have them tested and the contribution, the contribution. <laughs> Page 107, <laughs> number one not all. I can't say enough about it. <laughs> um, but one thing I do wanna, uh, I'd like to dive into something because I do have a few more minutes with you before we're gonna sign books. Um, I mean, definitely would like to have questions, but do you mind if I go into why and how plants powerfully support women. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Chapolsky's giving me the thumbs up. I love this is like a personal <laughs> discussion with you guys. Um, and I, I, some of you guys have heard, heard me talk about a lot of this stuff and definitely Cindy for sure. But I, um, when I'm not doing some work with cookbooks or um, the little bit of research I've done with uh, plant-based eating and kids, we actually have two studies that have come out. One in the, the department, uh, the with, with the Department of Pediatrics at the Cleveland Clinic was published in the Journal of Pediatrics. Another one was in the Cl Journal of Clinical Pediatrics. And they both have the wonderful conclusions of like, yes, these plants help obesity in kids. They help with the cholesterol numbers in kids. I mean, who worried about cholesterol numbers in kids? America, because we had plenty of kids to choose for our study. It was really sad and awful. But OK, I teach middle school sex ed when I'm not doing those other things. So I'm gonna talk about how plants, we talked about how plants can powerfully support women in their minds in some way. We 
talked about it and how we can help in their bodies in some ways. But I want to get to the undercarriage. And if you don't want to hear about it, you're more than welcome to step outside for a few minutes. <laughs> Seriously, some people get offended by this. I, I don't get offended by people leaving. Um, so anyway, I want to talk about that. And um, what's most helpful is that this is how I talk about things with my middle school kids. Um, and so the female anatomy is hilarious to get to because you talk about the male anatomy, you're talking about the bats and the balls and the twigs and the berries, the penis and testicles, all this stuff. Everyone knows exactly what you're talking about. They've got cousins, friends, um, or not cousins, they've got brothers or they babysitters or, or, you know, just simply know this stuff. And um, I mean, boys and girls don't know. And I'm always fascinated when I'm talking with my own girlfriends about this stuff. A lot of them don't know what's going on. So I break it down and it's kind of fun to talk about this stuff because I'm kind of more comfortable talking about the undercarriage than anything else. Um, so we're going to talk about the winning cross section. And from uh, we're going to go back to front. So in the back, she has a hole. Actually, everyone has a hole. Can you all say what that hole is? It starts with an A. Let's hear it. Yes. You guys are good. You guys are good. <laughs> you guys are good. So we're going to put a dump truck here for kind of obvious reasons, all right? So, and it says insulin because it's for another demo. But anyway, so, and she, oh, she's, she's plant-based, so she's supple and, you know. Okay, and in front of this hole, uh, women have another hole. They have another hole. This space is the vaginal space, the vagina. And I'm going to put a red tube here kind of for obvious reasons. Um, ahead of this hole, she has another hole, a teeny tiny non-expandable hole. This is the urethra. So many people are like, uterus! And I'm like, no! <laughs> the baby grows in the uterus and comes out the birth canal. Um, so I'm going to put my cup of water here for the urethra, because water, urine, that's where it urinates from. And then, if, and um, literally by this time, the middle school boys are like, she has so many holes. <laughs> I'm never going to survive this. I, I mean, how many holes do I have? This is terrifying. And I said, there's one more. And they're like, no. Said, but this is not a hole. This is not a hole. This is the clitoris, the clitoris, the clit, whatever you want to call it. This is in front. This is, <clears throat> I'm going to put a, a, a disco ball here for obvious reasons. <laughs> so, um, so Cuba, I want to talk about, because this is kind of what I find the most powerful too tall back here with my shoes on. <laughs> Hi, TV. <laughs> um, okay, so the reason why I have this up here right now is that what is so amazing about um, the Kuva, women, how it's powerful, supported by women, is it's, all, it's immeasurable. And again, at one of our Plant Strong retreats, we were talking about all this stuff. A woman, a doctor, she's been a, a doctor for uh, 45 years, she stood up and she just said, ah, we can't put up with this. And I was like, I'm so sorry, I'm offending you. I'm so sorry. And I started to like get off stage like I was, she just yelled at me. She's like, no, none of this. This, we need to fight for our bodies. We have withstood so much. Say it, Jane. And I'm like, okay, Mary, here we go. So, so but what we were talking about was all this stuff that I'm about to discuss now. So I have Mary behind me right now. Here in this, if we venture up from the anus, we're going up to the rectum and the bowels. And eating a whole food plant-based diet, that fiber you eat is what your microbiome most wants. It doesn't necessarily want other little pills that can be destroyed in your belly and just kind of cost a lot, but, the, but they might help you. Don't, I'm not saying to get off those. I'm saying your microbiome is as old as the roots of asparagus. It wants what it ate bazillion years ago. It, that's what your, your immune system will benefit from because it makes it the short chain fatty acids. Da, 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 da. I recommend Robin Shutkin or Dr. Will Bolshevitz for hearing more about that. But your body will feast, your microbiome will thrive with this plant-based fiber. Animals have bones to hold them up. Plants have fiber to hold them up. That's where you get it. Not from some smoothie that's been chewed up a million times with steel blades because the fiber is just gone. I mean, it's there. Don't get me wrong, it's there. But you really want to try to get the fiber in your body with your teeth, kind of how it was designed. Also up here, you're not going to be struggling with constipation with a whole food plant-based diet. It might take a while eating a bunch of plants, you feel like you're like, my God, I got a tumbleweed in here. Mm -hmm. But that tumbleweed's gonna collect those charcoal briquettes that were in there and just gonna <laughs> push everything out. And then it'll get going and flowing. Also, obviously, with a lot of water. Diverticulitis, which is the outpouching, literally from just from too much pushing, which comes from lack of fiber and water. 
Some people can have complications with medications and things. I understand that completely, but this is again, a book discussion in five minutes, but diverticulitis, constipation, feasting on a microbiome, and also hemorrhoids, which are that beautiful blooming gift of a bunch of balloons or grapes or like a beautiful dog paw coming right out of your <laughs> bum. Those things will be deflated if you're not having to push as hard. Yes, they can come blooming back up if you have to come through. You now, people travel and it gets complicated. I, I get that. Um, but really, it, it's beautiful, the ease you can feel back here. Your vaginal space. The vagina is a collapsed space. It's just like a hallway. It's like a lobby. The middle school boys love that. They're like, I'll be a bellhop, I'll meet you in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> they love it. But this, uh, this is really, like I said, just a collapsed space, but what's above it is beautiful how it benefits. Remember Jordy's story with the stalactites of the fibroids dripping down here and, she got off the meat and the dairy, and they just went away. In came the baby. Other things, obviously, your, your ovaries, your endometrial lining inside your uterus, all these things benefit from your hormonal messaging and not from eggs and from dairy and from meat. So much extra hormones getting into you from these things that we can put in, you know, dietary-wise. Um, I'm very aware of my time. I'm going a little bit over, so I'm going to hustle on here. But your, your urethra, up here, you've got your kidneys, you've got your bladder. Ask any doc. There's a couple docs here, but an overload of protein in your diet. Is that a wonderful thing, or does it burden your kidneys? Stephanie, Michael? It can be a burden. It can be a burden. So even too much plant protein can be a burden. So protein is not anything we're deficient in. It's not anything we need to worry about. I know I'm preaching to the choir here. So it's wonderful how your kidneys are not burdened. They do such a difficult job of filtering everything. Let's make it easy for them. And so we filter, filter, filter. And your bladder, some people have traced a lot of urinary tract infections, UTIs, to um, a bacteria that seems to be resistant to antibiotics that's often found in chicken. And this is the research of Dr. Michael Greger, or he's found this research and he just says like, if we can possibly get off this chicken and get away from this bacteria that causes UTIs, it would benefit everyone because you can even pass it to your partner if you're muckling around with he, she, them and transmitting that. And I thought, that is horrifying, <laughs> especially with this hookup culture. Okay. <laughs> I mean, like only vegans want it, but like, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, I'm hustling here. But this, um, the clitoris, the clitoris, the clit, this tissue in the, in the woman's body is the, t we're all made of the same Legos. Men have nipples, women have nipples, okay? Same with down here. We obviously vary like women have a uterus. But the tissue on the head of the penis is called the glands, G-L-A-N-S, and that is exactly what the same tissue is here on the woman's body with even a few more nerves. And I just read an article that says we actually have more than 8,000 ner wow. nerves there. And I couldn't believe that. I couldn't wait to hear this. He was, his research is embargoed till next month. Who can't wait to hear how many nerves there are? I can't wait to do the number reveal. The number is. <laughs> so um, the glands is, it, it, it responds to stimulus, obviously. But men have the shaft of the penis, which is called the corpus cavernosa, and there's two sides of it. And we also, females, we have corpus cavernosa in our body as well. And this branching out called crura, it's this beautiful, I, I'm side view here, but like beautiful, like two bunny ears almost that come up here. But as this corpus cavernosa, <clears throat> the longer it's stimulated, with well, the more time she's stimulated, I can just flat out say the more foreplay, if it's easier. Um, this engorges with blood, and when it engorges with blood, these blood vessels wrap around the vaginal space like a hippie that's hugging a tree. <laughs> and this, bl the blood is seeping through those tiny capillaries, <laughs> tiny little capillaries, because a woman's lubrication, her sign for readiness, is made of plasma that comes from the blood. The blood that's come this way, come hither, come hither, come hither, come hither. Her arousal happens when that blood flow can get through and help with it. It's lady chemicals, obviously, or female chemicals, along with her, the plasma. But a man's sign for readiness is an erection, which is blood flow, flow filling those spaces. Her sign for readiness, also blood fill in all these spaces. So a whole food plant-based diet, having 
endothelial cells that line all your vessels that can engorge with this blood and bring blood flow to where it needs to go is a really important part of her ex being ready and experiencing pleasure in all this. So, <clears throat> yes, there are t-shirts available with Kuva at <laughs> janeesselston.com. <laughs> People think that it's a Cleveland United Vegan Association. <laughs> and I, when I was recently presenting somewhere, it was like a Canada, oh, with the Canadians. It's Canadians, and I was like, it, it is just the, the Taurus, the wreath from vagina, penis. What does it say? It just, um, like a natural woman, feminina naturalis. It's a Latin. Okay. I asked my kid's high school Latin teacher, I took him in the t shirt. I'm like, what expression? He's like, I don't know. Those Latin teachers, they're known for their. Uh... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> It wasn't very helpful. That's the, I don't know why I wanted to go with Latin. I, think I, was, I was trying to go like kind of that collegiate look. Anyway, um, so I really wanted to just mostly share how plants powerfully support women. And this is why Mary from the back said, we put up with enough. We were also talking about kegels and urine retention. We were talking about everything and nothing to do with plants by that time. But it is beautiful how empowered you can feel and how much energy you have when it... it, it I mean, I think we all know the effect that like grease and meat and cheese can have on the way we feel. And to have that, you know, meal after meal, bite after bite can be overwhelming on just these teeny beautiful cells that we're made of. Um, all right, I'm going to stop now. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear them or stories or whatever. And otherwise, I'm happy we're going to clear the deck. And if people want something signed, I'm happy to do so. So any <laughs> questions? Oh, we have, by the way, two quick things. Can I make two announcements? If you are interested in being a whole food plant place person and you don't want to buy the book or anything, we have a free YouTube channel. Maybe some of you guys have heard of it or seen it, but it's on YouTube. And we didn't think it was going to go anywhere, so we couldn't name it after our book. Penguin Publishing was like, "Don't you dare name something that you guys are going to get up to." We don't. No, you can't use the book name. Um, and my mom thought I invented YouTube when. <laughs> When I, <laughs> she's waving a tovalo at me. That's our favorite weaponry. It's this kind of spreader. Um, so it's named, it's Jane Esselstyn, which sounds braggadocia. I don't mean to have it sound braggadocia, but we thought it would just go to like heart disease patients. And my mom's like, well, we're not going to be around. Name it after you. You go. And, and then I'm like, you guys are around. You're, you're my co-pilot on this thing. And um, anyway, so Jane Esselstyn at, on YouTube. Second thing is, um, with the holidays coming up, we are having an event. It's a short event. It's a three-hour event. And again, you can go to janeesselston.com or if on Instagram, go to the... I mean, I don't know if you guys are... I, I don't really know how to do it, but you go to my bio and my link tree. <laughs> and you can get, sign up from there. Um, but we're, we're going to just help you how to be a plant-based woman warrior through the holidays. Um, okay, some questions. Mm -hmm. Yes, total of questions. I would like to focus on the A. <laughs> Yes. My, yes. my husband and daughter do not want to do the whole food plant based because um, they have the opposite problem of constipation when they switch over. Does oh. that also resolve itself over time? Uh, you'll have to find out, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so. That's so. <laughs> okay. yeah, crowdsourcing, you. I love it. <laughs> Um, well, you know, I think some people don't, I think some people who, sometimes, not some people, some of us have normalized, like I had a friend who, she went, she went on a plant-based diet and she was blown away. She said, Jane, I loved Fridays. And I was like, the restaurant? She's like, no, Fridays, because on Friday, that's the day I'd get off the bus, I'd go home and I'd have my poop. And I'm like, what, what do you mean? <laughs> she said, I pooped once every seven days oh and i was like i think i've pooped seven times in one day sometimes like <laughs> so some people think and diarrhea is a it's like you know that's a different that's a flushing and a mm -hmm. liquid but just soft frequency that's not that's that's like okay. yay yeah that's to be applauded okay so i, I i'm not saying go check out the what's <laughs> <laughs> happening in the bathroom, but you know, sometimes, I mean, like being an outward bound instructor, some of our kids were like, oh my God, I, I, I'm having diarrhea. And I was like, you know what? You're, you've been healthy. I don't think you are. Well, it's all soft. And, that, and that, so they described to me, I'm like, that's a normal poop. Why? Well, it's usually, I usually, I'm like, mm, I don't want to hear about usually. You're, you're fine. <laughs> Keep hiking. Um, <laughs> thank you, Tovalo. Good luck with that. You, you had a hand up. I'm a, I love yogurt. I love organic yogurt. And I'm hearing that's not a good idea. 
I don't know what you want me to tell you. I'm curious as to what organic, non If I, there's so much amazing yogurt out there that doesn't have cow's oh, milk, okay. mm -hmm. and I'm being really gross and gesturing about it because a cow's udder is. Would you want to go suckle up to that thing? It's beautifully designed for a baby calf to grow like 60 pounds in six weeks. It is packed with everything that little calf needs. And that little calf, she's gonna grow to be a beautiful cow herself um, in a hot second. And it's just, a, it's a lot for the human, like it's like we're nursing a cow. So if you can go with an almond-based yogurt or they have soy-based yogurts, they have a cashew, cashew, cashew. There's, um all different kinds of yogurts out there um, that do have the same yogurt bacteria and they can get a thickness so I would encourage you to maybe try not going with dairy because it's just you freeing up a cow as well as your self. <laughs> thank you thank you any other questions or comments go 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 you go okay I can. Yeah. Uh, 12 what about B12? B12. She's asked about B12. That's a great one. Thank you for bringing that up. B12. Um, there's actually, can I add on D to that? Um, there are all kinds of, uh, like macronutrients are not an issue for all of us. We're getting plenty of food and it's a, we're kind of having a hard time with diseases of abundance. But we can be missing out on some little things sometimes. And on a, on a plant-based or a vegan diet, some people are concerned about their D, vitamin D levels and their B12 levels. And these are both things that do not come from food. D comes from when the sun hits our skin. And that's why they have put D in milk because we're living, we're no longer living just around the equator and getting enough sun to be healthy humans or with healthy bones. They, it's, it's in milk thinking that everybody drinks milk. And I think that's just sort of, a, sort of a racist move. That's sort of a move that was made a long time ago that wasn't thinking about a lot of people's ability to digest um, milk or lactose. So vitamin B12 is also not necessarily found in our diet. I mean, it's in some things, but it comes from, it's the bacteria that floats on top of a stream because we were supposed to be drinking out of streams. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so the bacteria that grows on vegetables in the garden, but we are such a hygienic, you know, good job, hygienic culture with food that um, we have to add B12 into our diets. And I think it's recommended for people, especially over a certain age, because we don't absorb it as well after a while. But B12, we do take that. Um, your liver supposedly, don't you dare quote me, our <laughs> liver supposedly <clears throat> can host about six years of it. And I've got people who are like, I'm having surgery for three days. I can't take B12. I can't take anything. I'm like, you'll be totally fine. <laughs> like. I take my pill whenever I remember, maybe once every month or month and a half, like when it surfaces from behind the tumor again. <gasps> Brian, our B12, have you taken it away? I was like, no, I haven't taken it since the summer. Like, and I'm standing full of energy, thick hair, clear vision, clear bowels. Those are my good tests. Can I still that? Um, so B12 and D, we do take them seasonally with the B12 and try to take, um, Sorry, with the D3 and then C, B12 as often as possible. Sorry, I got a little dizzy there. Um, any other questions or comments or things? So no? I just, I think so many people ask about protein. And I just, if you could just reiterate that, and she would never brag about her kids. Or she was started late in her teens as a plant-based person, but her kids, three kids have been raised on plants. One is six, seven. <laughs> swims for Williams. The other one, they're all tall, tall, strong, strapping humans have been raised on plants since the time they were wee ones and amazing swimmers. And um, so the question always comes up, even from people who have read your father's research and read your books, and they're like, but what about protein? Can you just give a little jam on that? There's no one knows somebody with a protein deficiency. Like, quash your core, the, you know, the kids who's can no longer nurse their mother because they had a new baby. That's what crush your core means in some language I don't speak. But that's a protein deficiency. Loss of color in your hair. Those, those kids usually have their hair is like a strange reddish, like rust colored and their bellies are distended with not just with quash your core, lack of protein. So it's, it's not a concern, period. 
Uh, we have a guy who presents at some of our events, and he says, like, there, there's, a pro there's a test, actually, to see if you have enough protein. Everyone's like, you kidding me? You kidding me? What, what's, the what's the name of the test? What's the name of the test? They're so ready to go. He's like, if you can walk into your doctor's office, you, you got enough protein. <laughs> So basically, if you're eating food, like food is like made up of oftentimes a lot of water, oftentimes a lot of, I mean, I'm talking plants here, just fiber. And like, it, is there a biochemist here? Like it's protein is like the building block of all these things. So it's not really a concern. Um, if you're a bodybuilder, you're probably not in the right book reading. <laughs> This isn't a book reading. My husband joked, Jane, book reading? You think you're doing reading? <laughs> Quarter cup of vanilla. <laughs> Half a teaspoon of nutritional yeast. He's like, they'll all be asleep. <laughs> anyway, all right, oh my gosh. I had hoped to be signing books by Quarter of if possible. But you guys, thank you so much for coming. Thank you.